Welcome. Hello. Thank you for tapping in, turning on, tuning in with I here on a Jeffrey Dahmer. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So welcome to episode three. Spoiler alert. I speak free. So if you did not see this episode and you care to see this episode, I will speak spoil the episode for you if you watch, if you choose to watch this without having seen it first. So I don't want to hear nothing because I'm telling you from the beginning before, you know, the sense it's, I can't even say the word, the sense before the, the sense it, ah, ah, before the desensitizing starts because you know sometimes we believe we start off actively listening and then before you know it you drift off into some other etheric space of were you really paying attention if that be you watching my kind of videos too the ones i make because if you have not noticed enchantress the babbler that is i you'll see why in a moment of time if this is your first time here um, but if it's not your first thing, you, you know how bubbling I be. And so it's a channeling spree. And so whatever, you know what I mean? What was I saying? <laughs> but yeah, so welcome. This is episode three. We're going to talk about the episodes freely. Um, we're going to dive into some things that you may have not known. I may not have known. Um, we're going to talk about this new Netflix series, um, Domner Monster, the Jeffrey Domner story. You know what I mean? Um, and my revolutionary take on it as it happens. This is all freestyle, although I take notes when I'm watching it. Right. I typically for those of you that don't know, and this is if you're time chiming in now and this is episode three and you don't know this about me, then I'm gonna ask, did you watch episode two? Did you watch episode one? Like what the fudge, right? Go watch those, hon, okay? Um, but you should know this by now, if you're in episode three, that this is me, um, cause I don't really watch TV and shows and stuff like that for 10 plus years or so. So I started wetting my toes and granted, you know, busy alchemist we be. It's not like I have, it's not like I sit all day in front of the TV and all this kind of stuff. And even when I'm sitting in front of the TV or finding the time to do this and stuff like that now to watch this and do this as I'm doing here now, right? With this commentary, like, because I got stuff to say. Um, this came inspired from another way. Like this is my daughter's way of her and I spending time and enjoying, you know, like granted, there's other things that we do that don't involve any technology too of how we spend time together. But for so long, I wasn't watching and I was like, you know, I barely sit down. The only time I sit down is when to record, right? And um, I don't even sit down and eat. <laughs> Unless I'm in a restaurant, I have to like comply to the standards of society. Like I can't stand in the freaking restaurant and eat at the same time. But I usually, even when I'm eating, right, unless I'm eating with, you know, like my family, we're doing a family meal of some kind and you sit down or something like that. But for the most part, because I'm a muncher anyways, um, I'm standing. <laughs> so um, I'm if this more relaxed demeanor of I and stuff like that. Um, that's coming with time and um i guess like you know activations of taking these moments and being conscious and aware to what else is happening here like you know it's also good to sit and relax and you know enjoy like you're not saying that i don't enjoy these things but either way so um i just you know sitting idle for a very um hyperactive human being that I multitask and do so many different things and have a lot of high energy and um, things to do. <laughs> Don't you got things to do? <laughs> so, you know, like, that's why I be like, I post and ghost. <laughs> People are like, oh, you saw my post? I'm like, <laughs> I do have my moments where that I like I, I've explained in other videos and stuff like that where um you know I make the time 
to the same way for the those that I do follow on my social media is to go through the thing and go on my liking sprees and stuff like that and acknowledging these other people that you know I do follow on the stuff but you know that's like setting an appointment in a calendar <laughs> you know what I mean um so you know it's using our time effectively and you know whatever and stuff so um Right. And, you know, like I'm usually if I update and stuff like that, it's in between stuff and things like that. It's not because I'm there. You know what I mean? It's just that's a that's a virtual layer that is just it, it exists, but it's it's not the real world. Right. So, um, yeah, you got to live right here. <laughs> here. Yeah, I'll be present in our present day. Anyways, this is not about that because if you want to know things like that and all that other kind of spiritual, esoteric kind of chat, you can see all my other videos about that. This is not about that. So we're not going to talk about those kind of things. Although if it comes up in these things, I don't see how because we're talking about Jeffrey Donner and how he likes to cannibal around. You know what I'm saying? And... Wait, hold on. Of course, it's always like that. I'm sorry that I paused that, but that was Andromeda, right? And she's the only one that I don't really have um, because they all sing, all my cats sing, and I have them recorded or whatever. But of course, when I stop and press pause so I can go record her singing that motherfucking loud, <laughs> like demanding, like, hello, she stops doing it. I'm like, so I didn't get the recording. I stopped what I was saying. I don't even know what I was talking about anymore because I got so distracted with and trying to sound. But let's not get distracted too much in life with all the distractions that happen out there in life, right? To cause you to lose sight of that which you are and what you should do and the purpose you are and the sense you have too and the brain that you have that you could think for you. You know what I'm saying? This be true. So anyway, this is episode three. Episode three, you know what I mean? And we're going to talk about a lot of different things, right? Because this is ridiculousness, right? Like, let's not repeat the same motherfucking mistakes and let us like really see like what took place, right? Because you have this, this is this, you learn this in elementary school doing timelines. You've lived in a world long enough to see a timeline play out. So let's use that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, let's use it, right? So um, yeah, if you're with that and like this and you know, whatever, I know I, I don't do like don't stick me in a box about one type of thing that I do. I just like one of my dearest friends. Um, and they're like, Yeah, I'm so surprised that you're doing <laughs> a video like this, like you know, like whatever and stuff like that. And I know, right? But that's evolution and that's the things that we sow, right? Like when you get into your knowing power, right? Because your knowing power is going to empower you to be that all that authentic and true that you are and fall into alignment that what you desire to bring and do and all this kind of stuff too, right? So don't get so lost into how much um, time you put in to the digital world, like even this. My videos be long. If you have two hours to spend and listen to it, like, you know, whatever, like for me, like if I'm listening to something, you know what I mean? It could be like while driving and you pause it and then you go back to it when you can, like in between productivity, <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was what I was saying before all that other, like, you know, anyways, but that's not what about this, about that. This is about Domner and his um, effects, but don't let it defect your own ability to see the tragedy of the human conditioning and the war of distraction that keeps getting fed and fed and fed into the world. And everybody wants to fight. I am right. <laughs> yeah. Episode three is not any better than episode two or one. They all are horrible. Not talking about, um, oh, but there are certain things that I do want to say. So as I, like, if you're here and you're in episode three, I'm just going to talk to those of you that are watching episode 
in the la, 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 sequence, the proper sequence, the appropriate sequence that it's in. You know what I'm saying? Um, and assume that you watched episode two and watch episode one. And you watching episode three without watching episode two and episode one, don't ask me nothing. Because your question could have been answered in episode two or episode one. <laughs> Just saying. I'll know by your question. <laughs> How much you have watched? <laughs> Anyways, so this is a discovery of truth. And granted, you know, so much time has happened and occurred and so much human conditioning and fuck ups in our all whole entire earthly system of humanoids on this planet, right? Right? Seriously, right? It's not a race war. It's not a this and that and this is humans <laughs> against other humans and then some of them team up or something like that like you know whatever the case may be and you might want to call it and identify it like I was saying like I coming back into that sort of thing to those of you that you should know like coming back into really paying attention to like what's going on and wanting to understand what's happening. Like what, why is that person's opinion this strong or why that person is like, what's going on here? Like, what's the argument? Like, I just want to know the argument, you know what I mean? Like, or something like that. Not really, but like, <laughs> but I'm just saying with certain kind of things that I'm divinely led and guided and, you know, pay attention to that. I find that I'm dipping my toes and poking my nose. Like, what you said, hold up, that that's doing something to me inside am i supposed to talk about this or like listen listen do i you know what i mean so um yeah <laughs> i know this is a serious subject and i know that i talk about really deep things but i feel like this is part of my own transmutation process and transformation process of how i compute and release and transmute and transform things. Like you have to have an antidote to something. If you have the same freaking poison to that thing that you're trying to, you know, like see past, get through, rise from, heal from, like learn from, find a solution for, like you gotta be the something more, you know what I'm saying? So humor is my open door. Like that's just where natural. Oh, shoot, I actually have to pause that. Hold on one second. Anywho, am I ever going to catch her beautiful singing? <laughs> but I don't even know what I was saying anymore. I know what we're going to talk about and stuff like that, but I'm saying a whole bunch of things. But in chances of other that, you'll see. I'll continue in some kind of way. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> about last night. <laughs> Anyways, finishing too from before what I was saying, um, before another like distraction came in and stuff like that, um, about why I'm doing these, right? So I found purpose with the activity that I was making time for with my daughter that wants me to watch this new series with her, you know? And since I'm being more open to this kind of experience, right? Um, I found meaning with it because 1991 was a significant year for me because I lost my mother. And so when this story came out, I was quick to be on top of that kind of stuff because that was kind of like what I was into, into that kind of like true crime or like sadistic mind or um, multiple personalities, dissociative identity disorder, um, trauma, um, psychology, and poetry, and astrology, and all this kind of stuff that I was into at that age. I read the book, and that was still before my mother passed away. And so this storyline and image imprinted in my childhood adolescence um, carries great significance into human conditioning that I can see from my own individualistic 
perspective. I can't speak for the whole, I could speak for my one and what I've seen come undone and all this kind of stuff. So that's how we're picking this apart. Like, cause as you can see from episode two and one, when I'm like, I'm a little like, you know, seeing um, the distortion and the misinformation and how all of this can just travel around the whole entire nation. And you got mad people talking about different facts that they think are facts about certain kind of things and just misinformation everywhere and nobody knowing shit about anything and then spreading false information a lot. So it's even hard for me to say based off of the things that I'm sharing with these episodes with Jeffrey Domner and stuff, and I'm referencing the show, I'm also letting you know that there's a lot of fiction, null stuff put into the show. Dramatic, I know, but it's based off of certain documentations or facts that one believes to know. But interestingly enough, from episode two, right? Episode two yesterday, I was talking about, and, and, and I, I don't know, I know I've mentioned it in episode one and two, whatever, in whichever way or degree that I mentioned that he learned um, the roadkill and the dissection from his father in school and stuff like that. But I came across an Oprah interview of the father yesterday. I didn't watch all of it. Like I said, I, it's in between takes. I was like, well, I was driving from one place from destination A to destination B. So by the time I got from destination A to destination B, that was all I can gather. And so that's all I'm communing here. So if you want to dive into it more and learn more and see more and determine for yourself, that's highly advisable. Like, don't listen to every freaking body you come across just because they resonate. Oh, my God, that, that person felt right. They could feel right and they could just be as fudged up. OK, so like, you know, I'm not saying that that's what I am, but I'm just saying, you know what I mean? Find your own truth and everything. Like, I'm not telling you to believe or see as I do. I'm just finding my expression and how I do what I do when I do where I do. And I'm enjoying it, too. So, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, about that. <laughs> so, yeah, this Oprah interview. And, and, and this is the father, okay? This is the real father, not the Netflix father, not the actor father. So get your, your factoids straight. Like, like uh-uh, that's not what the father said on the TV show. That ain't the freaking father. That is an actor reading his lines, reading a script that is mixed with some truth and fiction, okay? But because I'm running on the truth, I'm looking into these certain kind of things too. So it's causing me to question what I'm seeing here, like before I go into like, oh, let me before I get beastie, <laughs> like what's going on here and talking about my shit. Let me see what else I can find about this particular thing. So that's what you guys are going to get from all of this too. all the stuff that percolates in my mind, too, that causes the curiosity to go research a little bit more and give you some other information that is also out there for you to reflect upon and think upon and really find your evolution in because this is a worldly matter in every kind of way especially when we're talking about ignoring our intuition and 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 not doing the things that like you know that just makes all the fudging sense and how can it not be common sense but yeah people are completely oblivious or just like huh i trying that anymore George. You see my outfit? <laughs> Look at <laughs> You see? <laughs> you see what I'm wearing? <laughs> this world. Right? So, yeah, this is episode three, and we're going to dive into, and um, I got checked by, like, spirit yesterday because I was going to go in as a mother, like, rip this mother, like, a new a-hole, you see, just based off of one scene from the Netflix series, right? <laughs> but then I actually saw a little bit, again, we're going to talk about the little bits that I see, how I see, what I see, but again, it's not full like information you know what I mean there's a uh, so much out there for you to explore for yourself this is just a snippet of a snap bit of a whatever is happening right so in that kind of way I just take notes while I'm watching you know what I'm saying so I was ready to go in on this mother based off of the short scene that happened in episode three of when the mother was leaving 
And he was like, but I can't go with you. I have graduation, right? She, but Jeffrey's coming home, right? Spoiler alert, okay? He's coming home from school or walk or whatever. I don't freaking remember. Anyways, it's just coming into my mind. And she's like on full high drive, like ready to get the fudge out of there, packed up the car and put the brother in the car and is ready to drive on. He's like, and she's like, we're leaving blah, 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 and this and that. He's like, but I can't go. Um, I have graduation and this and that. She goes, you're not going anywhere. You're staying. And then goes into this nasty mode of like you don't even like me and all that um talking about um that roadkill shit when did you ever ask me to do that with you aside from your father or something like that and except thinking that i i'm i'm crazy because you know she talked about ufos that's how they're trying to make the mother look like you know hypochondriac um freaking talking about that she was she sees like ufos and i don't want to talk like i'm not talking shit about any of that kind of stuff or whatever based off of like my own human life experience and with my own spirituality and esoteric kind of involvement so again but i'm just saying that the depiction in the netflix series of their mother of his mother is to make her seem a little neurotic and a very much mentally ill and disturbed and how could someone award her custody of both children but because he was 17 or 18 years old or whatever pretty much an adult um she didn't she didn't include him <laughs> And then the stuff that she said to him before driving off and leaving, how they're making a scene on the Netflix series and all this kind of stuff, um, is really messed up. No child deserves that, period. I don't care what position you are in as a parent and what you're going through in your life and stuff like that. Like, you don't take a bite out of your kid. That is your responsibility. That's just how I feel. Granted, he was a psychotic freaking serial killer, eventually going into that chapter of his life because at that point he had yet to kill a human but according to real life documentation and stuff like that he he admitted right so if he never said this nobody would have known this that he was killing the animals and then doing these dissection things right but then on this oprah thing right but so in the in the show in the show right up until episode three the depiction that they're giving and they're making you think and see is that everything that he learned about this, like the cutting open and the gutting and this activity of roadkill with his, that he would do is always with his father. But in Oprah, the father's sitting there and he's being interviewed and he's talking and all this kind of stuff because at this point in his Oprah interview, he had already published his book. So she, I guess, read the book or wasn't well informed. She received a heavy synopsis of the book and what questions to ask and what to do. Or maybe she really read it too. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to assume. But don't believe everything you think you see because you'd be surprised how much information people don't know about shit. You know what I mean? And it's just told certain things and they just comply. Okay? So we don't know. We don't know. But in the show for the Oprah thingy, right? He said he had no awareness to the, to this, like, a fascination. So they brought up the, 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 the see so this is interesting because the oprah interview was back then like 1990 something i don't i don't know what year could have been probably 1992 you know what i'm saying or something like that and um and by that time i don't know how many books came out about jeffrey Dahmer, how many how much facts is out there in the media world and stuff like that because you also have to remember this is also the heightened um the heightened era of media in digital kind of forms growing right because in what year was it that the first internet or the website, the first website, I don't know if it was 91 or 81. So I was looking at both of those years and highlights from those years and stuff like that. But something with the first website or like the first, um, 
I, I butchered these kind of terminologies and stuff like that. Sorry, forgive me, but like that's not my expertise. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, the like the URL, <laughs> I don't know, but you know, like dot uh, com, like my website, which is utopian dot com, right? You can go there. So the first one ever created, like for like and 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 publicized too, and then also more. So like I think MTV started in the eighties or nineties whatever, but this is a growing thing, just like the same way with the AIDS epidemic. And, 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 and it was a growing thing. The homo, the, 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 um, um, homosexuals, right. That was a growing thing. Like this is all progression. This is process, right. This is all happening. And now we're at a full blown era of now transgender, like <laughs> it went from, so remember, like even here, we're sort of even getting, we're sort of growing or sort of filtering or started building traction was right in the media age like a digital media age right because now i see the importance of saying who were the baby boomers the millennials and the gen x and z like if you want to label them and put in everything and all this kind of stuff you see those that are like gen z or gen x i don't i don't know they don't know life without digital internet stuff those are like in the 80s 70s 60s like us right um I know a life without internet. <laughs> I know a life without internet. I, I did, my first beginning stages of life didn't have all that shit. So my adaptation to like all this kind of digital stuff, granted, I do it, I use it and all this kind of stuff, but it's not my, it's not my grounding force, right? My hands are everything. My feet are everything. My body is everything. My temple is everything. Right? So it's a little different, right, of how we see these kind of things. But this is the progression of how, why, too, in a matter of 70, 80, 90, 2010, 20, <laughs> In four decades, three decades, four decades, so much transformations have evolved due to this digital kind of evolve of information traveling even more faster now. Influence, right? Um, taking center stage, the media hitting the waves and dictating what you hear, what they say, and <laughs> Okay, attention. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So, what was the whole purpose of that? <laughs> I don't know, but I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry about It's funny. Smile, laugh, stop looking so constipated. For those of you that are doing that, for everybody else, just keep smiling, keep looking cute. You annoy a lot of people too. Wait, hold on. There's so much to pack in um, in this episode three about episode three and all the stuff that like filtered through and came through and how this babbling thing is going to <laughs> get through, go through, and on this time schedule too, because as I feel aligned and guided to say like um every episode is going to be every episode like I'm not going to do it part two of episode three like so it's as much as I can get packed in till I have to actually go <laughs> so hopefully I say everything and cover everything as I you know whatever it's going to be whatever because if not it'll just continue on to episode four because as you can see I still talk about the other episodes in each of the ep newer episodes and stuff like that so I cross-reference those kind of things and stuff. So, um, so on the Oprah thing, right? So I don't know how much information again was made available and where she was gathering all her intel from, right? But in episode three, there's a reference to a fishing outing between um I think his father's name is Lionel 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 
Lionel. Lionel. <laughs> Wait. Um, I have to keep that on. I'm sorry because I'm working. <laughs> And I don't mean to have my other like stuff that is notify making the notification sounds, but like this is how it be. You know what I'm saying? Um, so sorry, but um, yeah. So this reference of this fish, a uh, fishing moment, Oprah too brings up. So I guess this part of information of this fishing trip was made significant, could have been due to the trial and whatever Jeffrey Domner had confessed to, shared and to the mindset and stuff like this. And his father put it, um, she asked him about that. Like, how did you not know? Like, you know, with all this like um, roadkill or like this, this passion he was developing and all this kind of stuff. So the father said, on in Oprah that that he didn't do this with his so the way that it's depicted in the Netflix series about his father being a heavy participant which caused my strong opinions to say well he learned how to do all of this from his daddy and then from school and all this kind of stuff because this was something that they did together but that's not true right so based off of whatever well we don't know <laughs> Because some might believe the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. <laughs> because there was a moment on the Oprah show that I even, because I had to, I had to look, I had to look to see and read the energy in the face and the the response system. And you can look at it yourself. You can go check it out and you can let me know what you think. Like again, like this is my opinion. This is my opinion, um, right? This is my opinion, that's what I'm saying. Thank you. So, I'm lowering it for now, okay? So this is, again, my opinion. There was a moment that she had asked him directly, was he ever molested? And, <laughs> Whatever he responded initially, like whatever he said, like I can't even think about the words that he said. It's just the face that he made. But then I received instant download of the interpretation that that could even just be. It could be just like a tiring of why does somebody always have to go to these levelings of thought that something like this had to occur in order for someone to do that which they do. Like when you think about psychopathic tendencies and like what makes a psychopath a psychopath, then someone might say, oh my gosh, it must be in his upbringing, his home, his conditioning, his society, like all this kind of stuff or whatever. And um, based off of like even the Netflix series and stuff like that, like if you were to say, oh my gosh, we can understand why he became such a monster based off of what they're sharing from his life, that makes no sense. Right, based off of even just the even though the parents were fighting constantly in front of him and doing and he had to encounter a lot of those kind of things, there wasn't anything that was shared or depicted there that was like, wow, that was the defining moment, which whatever. And his father happens to be like a scientist or a researcher, or like don't quote me on the exact fucking career, but anyways, but um of that leveling of intellect. So he speaking to Oprah too, sounds very, um, but again, that was his son too, because if you hear his son in the interviews as well, his son sounds so articulate, so calm, so collected, so kind, so pleasant, like, you know, like not like, and then you can say his father too speaks in that kind of, kind of way, right? Like just knows what to say. And that kind of articulate, but he says that that's not an activity that they did together in the fishing moment. They brought up the fishing when, whenever that, so that did occur, like this fishing moment that's shown in episode three, where the father is um, um, showing him how to hook a worm to a hook and um, 
teaching him how to like I don't know like it was take out the guts or something like that of the fish or some I don't know if it was this particular anyways I'm seeing a whole bunch of stuff and also the father started talking to him while showing him how to do stuff was talking to him about girls and trying to see like where his head was at like saying that if he was dating any of the girls in the school um and and Jeffrey responding to him telling him that he he doesn't he doesn't like any of them right and you know being dismissive and so it appears that whatever lesson was happening here with the gutting and the fishing and the hook and all this kind of stuff it's a pivotal moment for the awakening of the beast and even more so for um jeffrey but we know that's not true because if we go into episode two or one i'm gonna have to recheck that or something i don't know anyways I'm not going to even go there because I don't even know where I'm going out with that. But if you go to um, in this moment, obviously, like, you know, it's, 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 it's pivotal because even Oprah mentions it here in this 1990 something um, interview with the father and the father says something very, um, which can be true. And it's interesting, right? So because, um, he said, I, I wasn't aware of his, um, like how fascinated he was with this thing that was happening while I was showing him or like, you know, whatever the case may be, um, because there was no visible reaction from him and his demeanor, his face and his stance that showed that. And now you have to think about that now. He, he said he learned this in hearing it from all the court testimony and stuff like that and having, and Jeffrey sharing this information that that fishing moment was this, whatever he said and however he said and how pivotal this fishing moment was for some other kind of awakening in his desires and fantasy and all this kind of stuff. The father said on Oprah, he visit he because they because the questioning of it is like, but how did you not see this psychopath awakening looking at you like like because you would imagine like if you got like psychopathic tendencies and based off of what he actually really did right the the mutilation and the gutting and all this kind of stuff and things like that and my friend that I was talking to right Warren. He said he was like he mentioned something real quick because we it was a quick conversation and stuff like that. Um, that the the gutting and the mutilation or whatever could be because he didn't have nowhere to put like the bodies and stuff like that, so he had to get rid of it and stuff like that or whatever. <laughs> Which is true, right? Which is makes like, but the fact that that's the solution, anyways, is like, you know, the difference between what psychopaths would do and maybe someone else that would maybe drag the body out or still and take that risk. That's not me, right? No. <laughs> That's what you're trying. Um, right? That is not, um, like there's so many factors and variables that we can come up with as to why, what would make him lean that way and stuff like that. But based off of the show, right? Um, you see that that fascination of the disintegration or the preservation of human body parts and pieces like the skull and stuff, he had that for a long time. So even if he had an easy way to like, let's say dispose of the bodies, would he have done that or would he have still dismembered and grinded or sliced and diced and ate the bodies. Based off of what I'm receiving from watching and just interpreting of what this man and who this man is and became and was, I don't think that mattered. I think he would have ate them anyways. <laughs> That's just my opinion. <laughs> that's just my strong opinion I'm gonna stick to that I think that even if he had an easy disposal like he could just like there was like this magic portal that just he could just throw the body in throw the body in 
No. <laughs> he would have still mutilated. He would have still raped. He would have still fucking dismembered. He would have still ate the fucking bodies. But that's where I'm at with this. Um, just even as much as I go in and, and I can see all the faulty ways of how the system failed or and all this kind of stuff and like this human conditioning that I can just be it's sad right it's so fucking sad that that like you know I saw also misinformation in some comments and stuff like that I didn't respond to it or anything like that where someone was saying that's not true that um but this is how a lot of misinformation on the internet especially gets around and somebody reads it doesn't do their research doesn't do their investigation doesn't find out the truth for themselves and accepts that which they receive what they think they know and say oh no that's not what I know oh, this, 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 this. and because everybody wants to fight about something and be right about everything and you know whatever the case may be and they want everybody to accept that which they say and do and all this kind of stuff too and if you got a problem and that's just how we do right but um where they were like no that the neighbor really lived across the street and all this kind of like what it was a 45 apartment apartment complex (laughs) the neighbor lived a wall away <laughs> and a few other neighbors lived the wall away and there was mad apartments on each floor across to the side the land you want to dance all the time because there was so many apartments <laughs> on each floor okay so not only was Nisi nash his only a neighbor she was not the only one like direct neighbors, I don't think, but again, I'm going to double, double, double check that. So don't quote me on that just yet, but I will confirm that for you because based off of even just other um, visuals of the apartment and all this kind of stuff too, that they were shown, (laughs) it looks like there was a lot of apartments on each floor. (laughs) So stop it. Right? And stop believing everything again, like that you hear and receive, because not everybody knows what the fuck they're talking about. And some that um, do it purposely and whatever. It is what it is at the end of the day. So make sure you know why you do what you do when you do when you do and how you do and what you and what you receive and how you receive and what that means to you and how you're going to receive all of that too. Right. So anyways. So the episode three starts in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in 1959. Um, so that was, um, th- this is where they give a little bit of the backstory of the mother and the father at this time. So this is, I believe, before he was born because she was pregnant with him, right? So that's what we were talking about in episode two. And I was like, wait, we're going to talk about all the pills this bitch was taking while she was pregnant. <laughs> no one that she was acting a little cray cray. <laughs> she was taking 26 pills a day. Mama, you heard my cat? Mama. I tell her to stop saying that word, but she don't listen. Stop saying that. She be calling everybody on my mouth. <laughs> I'm like, stop. Stop calling everybody a mama, okay? Okay. So, so, episode three starts with this introduction to the world of womb. For out of the womb came life. Out of some fornication from one night, okay? Births new life. So before he even exited the womb, he was heavily dosed with medications. And so it is shown, depicted in this Netflix series that the father was very adamant about her drug usage of and her argument, which is what everybody's argument is, right? When they have prescribed medication, these are prescribed to me by a doctor. How dare you call me a drug addict? If you are triggered by this and you have medical conditions that you have to take mad medication for, do not come at me. 
I don't know your condition. I don't know your position. I don't know anything about your situation, nor am I commenting about you. So take your butt hurt feelings about your drug usage and pharmaceutical acceptance as your practice and lifestyle and get to better understanding it for your fucking self. I didn't have to curse there, but that's another trigger for some people because they'll like what I say and they're like, but why does she have to curse? <laughs> Stop judging me. That's what spirit wants you to learn. <laughs> Judgment. No. <laughs> now you know. Right. So, but we're gonna talk about that because, and this is this is real talk. Okay, I'm not saying I'm perfect and I'm not saying I live the most healthiest motherfucking lifestyle. And I'm not saying I've always lived this kind of lifestyle that I live now either. So don't the past want to come back and haunt your ass. I'm like, uh uh-uh, uh, in, in, in high school, you ate a Twinkies and you used to smoke pot and drink. Hey, right? or you do a, you smoke cigarettes all the time. Or, and they want to come at you, right? And they're like, stop it, stop acting like you perfect and all this kind of stuff and all this kind of, nobody's acting like they're perfect. But I know what position I'm in in my now mistake moments to know how I feel about a lot of things. I have had enough 40 plus years life experience to think that I could think for myself. I could come to terms with how I feel about certain kind of things and formulate my own opinions, right? Which I'm entitled to, right? You're free to think however you want to think. But we live in a pharmaceutical industry. Be careful what you say on the internet. You know what I mean. No traffic to the video that speaks about these things. I understand that could be too, right? But whatever. We say what we say. Now we're saying anything to trigger in any kind of way, which is using the words and putting it in a sentence and you're taking it into personal, 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 personal field and territory and interpreting it because there is a part of you that needs to go dive deep into you to figure that out for you of why you even butt hurt in the first place right <laughs> yeah right healing heal heal right so heal heal without the need for pharmaceutical medicine but you know we don't say those things here so anyway so according to this um scene in in in, in episode three where the father is like arguing telling the doctor about all these medications that she's taking and prescribed and pregnant with at this time. Um, So, wait, sorry. And these two are clearly not a healthy couple. You can, uh, hold on. This is why I'm glad I looked. This is, that was intuition. Always trust your intuition. But yes, this is not about me. This is about Jeffrey Dahmer and his mother, who was taking 26 plus pills a day while she was pregnant with him in every kind of way. For how long? I don't know. Um, but still, the developing fetus was cranked up with drugs. And it's shown in the show, episode three, that the father was overly concerned, you know what I mean? Thinking about what this could be doing to the baby. And the mother's argument was, how dare you? These are prescribed by your doctor. Yeah, that was her argument. I don't even be wanting to take Tylenol or or anything for, like, if I get a headache, let's say. Because of how I believe and what I believe about our immune system and our ability to give ourselves healthier things. And to trust in our own abilities to to be the medicine and allow for certain things to pass through 
without any substance interfering with it. Now, granted, I believe in science and medicine and 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 the wonderful things that have been able to be created and made to be so helpful and useful to many other kind of conditions that exist. But then we can go into the history of the root of these histories of conditions that exist and argue, well, if this didn't happen and this didn't get done and these things didn't um, be placed into our system, like, you know, certain needle threads. Um, would these other things even exist? So, you know, <laughs> so much. But yeah, so his, right, so emphasizing his mother's abuse of pills, what pills, right, name the medicine, so further research can be done. So I did get some of the names of some of the medications. His um, mother, Joyce, mental health, was diagnosed with mental health issues and hypochondriac, and labeled as a hypochondriac. Um, she was taking hormonal drugs, Equinol for her anxiety, real refill after, sleeping pills, laxatives, volume, morphine, barbiturates, fathers concerned about baby, 26 pills a day, right? And the doc was trying to convince her that it was normal to be as hormonal as she is. And think about that too, um, just in the... Um, the codependency upon substance to be the nullifier or numifier or dumbifier um, agent to suppress, like, you know, condition, like, you know, it's like somebody that's suffering from like, let's say a cancer or something like that, um, that they do need, let's say medications for and stuff. Again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not pretending to know anything about any of this kind of stuff or whatever. I'm just speaking like, you know, and I'm entitled to the land, okay? Yeah, so like, um, and granted medicines and herbs, I'm really big on herbs and all this kind of stuff too, but like then you have our tainted world system of soil and poisons and things like that that can <laughs> take something that is supposed to be good and make it bad. Like, you know, there's so many factors that play into our diets and our health and our wealth and our styles and all these things like what to do how to do where to do and all this kind of stuff too right but I'm really big on natural homeopathic kind of um remedies before I go I, I do believe in if you have if, if there's something that you need and uh, from a doctor you know what I mean and whatever and you need the medication or whatever like again I'm not going to judge your situation every situation is individual and different and there are things that have been created to be such a beneficial and good use to those that do really need something like that you know whatever that is you know and stuff like that so I'm not here to knock any of the medicines that have been beneficial and all this kind of stuff but like again it has become the codependency upon the human to rely upon these things that um, are made to keep you sick in that kind of way you don't know the the passage of its waves like you know what i'm saying i'm not scared <laughs> that was weird okay anyways um it's like to weaken your immune system even more because you become so dependent upon a substance to help you feel better how do you ever make your system strong like anyways it's anyways so i just find that i like alternative healing methods and I apply alternative healing methods first before I apply any other tactics that might require more you know what I mean like I, I'd rather go the natural way than the pass me a pill kind of way and stuff like that and um mask the condition you know what I mean so um that's just where I'm at in my evolution and how I feed my system. So um, I don't agree 
especially if you're pregnant, to be taking 26 motherfucking pills while pregnant, especially, and think that's okay. And if a mother can't see that because she depends upon the pills that she has to help her to feel better. And again, conditions are going to always be different because someone's going to be offended by that too. What I say? Because they might be taking mad pills too while pregnant. Like, oh, I need this and I'm going to wait. Drug addicts. It's like when I used to smoke cigarettes. I had to have a cigarette. The chemical dependency. Right? It's so many depths to addiction that you have to alchemize. It's not just a, a, a pill addiction, a cigarette addiction, right? It's a physical one. It's a mental one. It's an emotional one. It's a chemical one. All these departments that you have to like go through. So this is a developing fetus and the mother is codependent upon 26 pills a day for all different reasons to mask her condition, which she still obviously was crazy about, right? That's how they're depicting her. Like, it didn't even matter. You're taking these 26 pills and you're still acting like this. So how is it helping you? How is it helping this baby now? Right? But already when you're in a mental um, state of like confusion or illness and stuff like that. Again, we have these levelings of people, enablers, sadistic, twisted persons to manipulating certain kind of things too, to be a certain kind of way in whichever way that's going to be or just conditioned to be with this levelling of stupidity or way to be. Like, it's crazy. So this doctor is hearing their argument as they're like talking to him and he's hearing the fight and he's trying to convince her that it's normal for her to feel this kind of way, especially while she's pregnant in that kind of way. Um, and to know that it's going to pass, but if she can do her best to not have to rely like, you know, on um, these pills and to try to do it, you know, Without taking the pills, that was a problem. So clearly, based off of this like um, doctor session with this couple, this woman was so alright <laughs> because they were trying to take her drugs away, and the monster came out to play. So this is Jeffrey Dahmer's life prior to exiting the womb. And then you have in episode one where he was telling the cops that when his son was four he had a hernia surgery right and that he realized that after that surgery he was never the same little boy as he was before right so we think about that then we think about this oprah thing right so i'm to they're depicting this on netflix this couple at war from the womb. So look at the whole entire um, episode. Remember, I've only seen episode one, two, and three, right? Um, I've only seen episode one, two, and three. And so far, the parents have always been fighting, <laughs> right? They've always been at war. And now we're getting a little bit more intel before Jeffrey was even born. They were still at war then. And she was already still heavily medicated then and mentally disturbed and all this kind of stuff. So this is a buildup. So this is the world he came into um, out of the womb. Do you want to have sympathy, compassion, and all this kind of like enabling energy towards his condition and say, that's why, that's why he was the monster that he was and stuff like that. But still, there's so many details to this freaking story and information that shows you that he wasn't the only monster here in terms of abstract world of stupidity that contributed to the monstrous acts that he got to play out because his environment allowed him that space of creativity to explore. 
that's from one artist to another artist to explain the Jeffrey Dahmer situation. Because one can say what he did was art. He had an artistry to the lobotomies. He had an artistry to the dismemberment. He had an uh, artistry to the movement and to the way that he got his 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 prey in. So, anyways, because I'm looking at the time and and I didn't even get anywhere that I need to get to. So we're just traveling through right episode three. So this mother took all these medications right it's just like you can dive in so we're not going to dive into that a little bit more we can talk about that more later but i just want to get through the whole entire thing right so um and then in this development too you see the progression of um jeffrey dahmer's process of um building up his own confidence or working um through his fantasies right because here you see him drink a lot he starts to drink a lot there's even a, a scene where he comes into class in high school and he opens up a can of beer in like a class and they're like are you drinking beer and stuff like that like and this was right before his graduation and all this kind of stuff and so this is um his first kill right so his first kill was shortly after his high school graduation right so um either way so just to break down of the recap of this um Netflix thing because you got to remember if you really want the truth and stuff like that you don't rely just solely on Netflix because Netflix has fiction in it too just the same way as episode one episode one they they're showing you that the survivor right um what's his name Tracy I forget his name I'm so sorry like I don't mean to do that but um I don't know. Anyways, I don't. I don't want to get lost into like, oh my god, what's this this guy's name? Um, they have him as gay, and he's not. He testifies. The real person, the one that went through this, not the actor. Okay, testifies and says, "I'm not a homosexual," and that's not how he approached us. He didn't approach us on any kind of homosexuality. He approached us as a photographer that was willing to pay models to 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 pose a nude for what this is the work that he did. And since he's offering to pay, and these are the these people could use the money. Hey, why not? Morals, right? Value systems conditioning in our society you can make it about homosexuality you can make it about color of the skin and all this kind of stuff so far the depiction in the whole entire video and just if you go into the real life facts about what was going on everybody was mixed color here everybody was unified here the people hanging out with each other and stuff were both black and white and mixed or whatever or asian or spanish or whatever okay before you want to go make it about color. And then if you want to make it about color war too in the judicial or the, the justice department and system, how about it's just a, 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 a way of looking at a certain society of people and a certain demographic of people. This is where, you, granted, you can get like, you know, um, personally, like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, like it could be a prejudice towards your demographic. Granted, and nobody's saying these things are correct. This is right, and that shouldn't be that way. And we can argue and fight and war in that kind of way. But the argument that everybody kept spitting about the officers that were handling this Jeffrey Dahmer situation prior to his actual arrest and stuff like that, they did not do their job. It had nothing to do about race, homophobia, or anything like that. They, those officers just did not do their job. They did not follow protocol. They did not do what they were trained to do. They did not protect and they did not serve and they did not do any justice to this whole entire situation. It has nothing to do with race or ethnicity or all this bullshit that everybody wants to keep on being hung up about they fail to do their job that's what's really up and the people around them allowed them to fail to do their job because they accepted the position that the officers were in who did not do their job so nothing got done and more people got murdered granted they're not responsible for the murdering psychopath that Jeffrey Dahmer was and became. They're not responsible for that. Nobody's saying that. 
But the fact that they can sit there and say, like, in episode two, like, if you watch that one with me, where the officer's like, oh, I was in agony. I did not get that 14-year-old boy back to the, to different Donna. Yes, you did. That is exactly what you did because you didn't do your fucking job. I don't feel sorry for you about your agony, your false agony. So that's like kind of like, you know, what we're doing here, right? So episode three. So, but right, but so all this misinformation that gets fed around and there's so just so much misinformation that gets fed around that n- nobody's checking their their facts. But everybody's determining truths. Right, so I have to turn this on, sorry, because I cannot. All right, lose track of time too. So, um, so yeah, so. All right. All right. Okay. So we can make it a war about, or you could just see it for really what it was and what it is. It's it's everyone. Hold on, please. It's like matching the lifestyle and the habit, right? It's like when, <laughs> anyways, this is just a wild thought. Like, whatever, we're going to go back into this because my time has just got even cut shorter. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's like, yeah, anyways, skip. <laughs> so, right, so, okay, what are we talking about and all this kind of stuff? So, um, so yeah, so episode three travels into even deeper into the upbringing and environment of Jeffrey Dahmer to give you insight into what could have possibly went wrong with this seemingly sweet, shy, weird, cookie, weird child, right? Right, so, um, Anyway, so the show, don't believe everything you see on the show because it's mixed with fiction too, just for dramatic effects and all that kind of stuff. But if you want to cross-reference information, then you're going to have to do research. Or you just come here and watch and I'm cross-referencing and it does something you want me to cross-reference for you, then let me know. Okay, okay, okay. So either way, so, um, right, so... So here we get into the, the the timing of his first kill that is shown here. So remember how in episode two, I was like, oh my goodness, if they would have just did their job, right? If they would have just did their job, then they could have prevented the next couple of killings, right? Because they would have found their killer and they would have had him in custody and he wouldn't have been able to do what he did next. That's just like that. Never mind what Officer Gorbajish whatever his name was, said, I I did not give a 14-year-old boy back to a serial killer. Yes, you did. Actually, you didn't just give him back. You escorted them both back to the place that he was trying to run from. (laughs) Not only did you give him back, you escorted the both of them back to the death trap. Stop it. Right? Anyway, so... So now there's a there's a scene in episode three. Spoiler alert, okay? So if you don't want to know, hop off, okay? Where um where he after he killed for the first time, right? A hitchhiker, right? This is the hitchhiker Stephen, okay? This is the story of Stephen, okay? A hitchhiker that got picked up. By someone that up until that point was having so many fantasies about homosexuality that was turning him on. 
that <laughs> he infused with violence in some kind of way. Again, it's like the blackouts that he would say, right? Um, he had these blackouts. And I feel like these blackouts, because we have so much detail about all the stuff that he did, the lobotomy, the, 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 you know, the cutting, the dismembering, all these kind of things. And granted, um, that could be analyzed by a professional and all this kind of stuff of what could have possibly went and happened first and all this kind of stuff. You can um, see that, like an autopsy and all this kind of shit. But he offered a lot of information when he was alive and when this whole thing was going down that he was already caught. Like he felt like I don't, I have no reason to lie. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you what I, what I remember and what I know and who I killed, what I killed and how I did <sighs> and how I did and what I did. And that's, you know, whatever. I got nothing to lose. I'm found out. Right, so he spoke freely, so there's no real reason to think that the information that he shared was of like blasphemous nature. He may have died with secrets, things he you think that because he was so open and forthcoming with information that he would have said. But maybe there was some shit he took to the grave. That's just human nature, condition, way of being. Not everything gets or has to be shared. But then we got this evolution of this digital daycare that has progressed from that time that's now crescendo on out and everybody has got to share everything even when they poop. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Right, you have people sharing murders on their social media feeds. Like I did this, and granted, those videos get taken down after all that kind of stuff. But people going live doing shit or going on social media after they commit some whacked out shit. Candace Owens has it right about social media, and. It's mental illness, disease that plagues so much of our human beings, you know what I mean? And the things that we see, but that's not what this is about. <laughs> this is about Jeffrey Dahmer. And this is back then, right? So um, Stephen, his first hitchhike, his first kill, right? And after this, he didn't kill for, I believe, nine years, okay? Um, so, yeah, so he kept eyeing. So the fantasy build up before he picked up this hitchhiker, Stephen, he kept eyeing a local neighbor who went on jogs daily at the same time, same route all the time. Another young lad like him because he's high school at this time. So the other person is of probably high school, too, and jogging and working on his body. So here in episode three, you see the progression of Jerry, Jeffrey Dahmer, Dahmer um, doing something um, focused, which is physical fitness. This is when he started really lifting weights and working out and building definition and body. This is how it's depicted in the Netflix series and stuff, series and stuff like that, um, where he um, is working on his fitness, that also building his confidence. And he's also having these fantasy moments because he would drink, drink, drink and get like drunk. And then because his father left him alone in this place um, and worked or... <laughs> Either way, the depiction that is showed in his senior year of high school, he was pretty much left on his own. Um, the story is that his mother went to go away for like a little while and still hasn't returned or something like that. But mind you, we go back to the episode three where I was saying that the mother had told him some really nasty things. And I was just like, oh, bitch, please. Right. Um, like, how dare you speak to your kid like that? Like, he didn't have to be here. You brought him here. And this is how you speak to him and how you treat him and how you nurture him and how you love him and how you accept him and how you just shut him from this whole freaking world. But anyways, 
has a mother that just infuriated me, right? But, right, and I, I still don't excuse certain kind of things. And again, you know, whatever the case may be, she was mentally unstable. That was the depiction that they gave. But also in episode three, you learn a little bit more about the mother too when she started her life over. I think they went to California or something like that. She took the other son, the younger son. And she started her life again. Um, she was giving back, like like volunteering and stuff like that. So um, based on her real life information, I, I didn't do deep, deep, deep research. OK, so anyways, um, apparently she worked for a um, with a lot of AIDS um, patients that, and when at that time, because remember the time frame, that's when um, it was crescendoing and it still was being learned about and um people were um scared of it and so didn't want to have anything to do with it so she was one of the like you know like the few people that um that helped treat or care for or befriend you know people with this condition, this disease, or whatever the case may be, and giving back in that kind of way. But she also did um, her own um, interviews and stuff like that. And and based off of like the real life events, not the Netflix thing, it seems like she spoke openly about her her participation and her her guilt towards her. I guess you know her mothering towards him and all this kind of stuff. And I, again, I didn't do deep enough research to confirm or to say, and I'll let you know later on and stuff like that. Like, does he be the alchemist, right? So this is as much as I got to get to and stuff like that. So I'm just sharing that with you. Um, the depiction based on the Netflix series and the depiction based on um, interviews, documentations, and, inter you know, things, information that's out there, it, 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 it's conflicting. It's the same thing, like, when I said that some information say that he was having an affair with the father, and that, and then some other information, they say that the mother was having an affair, but again, I'm just saying that there's just so much information out there, anybody could say anything, and, and it just stays there, because it's, like, in this ether space, and anybody that comes across that piece of information, <laughs> we don't, the, the, the leveling of intellectualism in each individual that comes across each kind of information, we can't determine how they're going to interpret, receive certain information, if they're going to do their own research or think for themselves and not just take everything in and believe, you know what I mean? But <laughs> the way that we see and the way that we see society, we're conditioned in a society to believe that which we see. So that which we see, no matter the artistry or the um, illusion presented, people are believing that which they see without much depth of going into anything. You know what I mean? Just like these officers, you know what I mean? Who didn't do their job. Episode three. Episode two, I was furious. I was like, wow, you could have saved that little boy's life. You didn't do your job. Episode three, wow, you could have saved 17 other people's motherfucking lives. If you just did your job, police officer. And I can go, oh, my goodness, this is a whole entire police force. The force. <laughs> this is a whole entire police force. This is this is cops all in general. I have family members that are cops. I don't have an issue with all police officers. I have friends that are cops. I don't have problems with police officers. So I'm not going to speak ignorantly and be like, it is the whole corrupt police department and system and all this kind of stuff and say all that kind of stuff. And I know people in the police department from all ethnicities. And I can say with absolute confidence, these people are not corrupt. I like fell asleep. So, so yeah. So stop overly generalizing and stop like making it a big issue, a, a big issue about an issue with an individual or a particular sector of people or places, right? Okay, I'll start wrapping this up. 
right? So, but either way, based on the depiction of this movie and stuff like that, they make it seem really cruel how the mother left Jeffrey Dahmer there too to kind of like, like, like she didn't choose him, she didn't accept him, she didn't want him, and he wasn't going with her. And I just feel like as a mother, you know, and then we think about these situations, like how would you feel as a parent if this was your child? Do you still love them? Like, like you know, people could have mixed information, mixed feelings about the father because pretty much the father supported the son up until his last dying breath when he was bludgeoned to death. But the father openly spoke about his mixed feelings towards his son. And I... And the movie depiction of the father, right? Except for that sobbing moment that he had when the officers were telling him about why he's really there. I didn't really have any compassion towards the father because of how cold the depiction of the father was being displayed. And I was just like, I have no sympathy. Where were you emotionally for your child? That was your job. But based off of the intellectualism and based off of his articulation, but again, you can't get so lost in that kind of stuff too because you have sadistic monsters that just know how to speak to a crowded room and they can make you believe a lot of things. I dated one of those. Sounds good. Wow. Wow. Sounds great. Is it? Same thing like social media line, right? Everything looks great. People posting pictures of their food, their outfits, where they're traveling to, all this kind of stuff. Everybody's thinking everything is peaches and cream. Meanwhile, there's a monster behind the scene. You know what I mean? It'd be like that. Raising awareness on our own interpretations, articulations, and truths, right? So we're going to do that too. I actually just got clarity about what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause this recording <laughs> and keep it on pause and come back much later in the eve um, to finish the recording and stuff like that because I got to start heading out and stuff like that. So I, I, I do want to finish this articulate episode three. It might be one of the longest <laughs> episodes. But I don't care. You know what I'm saying? So whatever, because there's a lot to pack in. There's a lot of information here. There's a lot of stuff to learn from, right? Um, there's a lot of stuff to see, the pattern of human developing and the stupidity and how things could have been different. And granted, you can't live in the past and you can't be like, oh, if that only happened in this, happened in that, and all this kind of stuff, nobody's doing that. But still, this is an opportunity to reflect upon a couple of decades spans of generations of lifetimes that are happening here in your human existence that you can articulate upon and see the truth for that which you stand upon and stand firm upon too. And if you can't stand firm upon that which you think you know and all the things that you see and breathe, then maybe, you know, the channel is something you could just check out, you know what I mean? So either way, I'm going to end it right here because pff, I gotta go. <laughs> That's just how it be for a busy alchemist, you know what I mean? But we are going to tap back, turn in, tune in later Um, if it's still like this. If not, I don't know. I'm gonna, then if this, for whatever reason, Mercury be batshit crazy, um, is still not here by the time I return, you know what I mean? Then there will, for episode four, we're going to be talking about episode three mixed in with episode four. <laughs> And that might be a longer episode but if this is still here when i get back then we're just going to continue from where that i left off and that's just going to be a different energy and space so i just want you to know that um yeah so and then yeah cool so yeah see you soon this is like a slight interlude time has passed and i'm not coming back to sit down and chat i still have to now go again right but something occurred while i was driving and i was just thinking about energy frequency and vibration right although this is about jeffrey Dahmer and all this kind of stuff but you know how they say thoughts become things or you know the the, the power of our imaginations and how if we are so focused and determined upon that which we want to create and the focus we give and the 
effort we put into these kind of things, the things that we create, and we talk about how the universe works in our favor when we're aligned with our purpose and stuff like that. I was just thinking about that in energy, frequency, vibration with Jeffrey Dahmer and this stuff because part of the story i'm just like what is going on here how can these people be so stupid how can the system fail like this how can this be like this how can you not see this and putting it together like this and how can you get so distracted by this and how can you know all this kind of stuff like this and you think about it from an energy frequency vibration thing there was one thing that jeffrey Dahmer was consistent with his energy frequency vibration focus fantasy imagination play that he allowed to entertain and did things to support that which he desired and he kept it you know building with passion desire and to you know tangible it became in every kind of way and all this kind of stuff and the universe of support that he received because so much stupidity occurred in between that helped him to feed the monster that he was aligned and alchemized with in every kind of way that energized this into reality and the universe played into his fantasy right sort of if you want to look at it like that so that was like the epiphany <laughs> when I, was trying, I was like oh my gosh if you want to think about it from energy frequency vibration and you know when you focus on these kind of sensations and all this kind of stuff like what do you have here? You know what I'm saying? Like, did he manifest the life that which he desired because he focused on his inspire and voila, served to him like a, on a silver platter? <laughs> Think about that. How much focus, determination, and patience you have with that which you wish to make manifest. Do you have the patience, dedication, and effort, and, 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 and passion, and fuel to really birth that which you desire to create? But anyways, that's not about episode three, but that was just something that I was seeing. And I was just like, okay, I gotta say this in between these things. But either way, see you soon. Peace. Grand Rising, everybody. It is day two of episode three. Woohoo! Wait a second. Forgive me. I've been up for a while. And although it's still early morning, you know, um, I do work from home a lot of the times aside from, you know, the teaching and the body work and all that stuff that I do travel for and do. That's just a little side note. For those of you, this is episode three. We're going to go talking back about Jeffrey Dahmer. What the fudge? I can talk to, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, um, and I've been on calls and stuff like that. And then we forget little basic things like, you know, like anybody, anybody else this too happens to like, you know, I got animals and stuff like that. So I sit down and I'm finally ready to hit record. And then it's like, ah, I gotta go do that. So, and then, so, and I also have to wrap this up because I have another call. It's 10 30. Right. So, and also I'm going to be going, um, I'm going to be doing a recording for, um, the other series series that I have here on YouTube with, um, my, with my, with my cousin, <laughs> I forgot the name that I gave it, <laughs> but it's all about evolution and all this kind of stuff too. It's not about Jeffrey Dahmer, but it's like, you know, real life, real talk, evolutionary vibes, that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So make sure to check that out too. But either way, tapping in, turning on, tuning in back to this Jeffrey Dahmer episode three. Of course, I would leave my notes over there. <laughs> Be right back. <laughs> But seriously, if there's anything that I learned from episode three is anything you desire to make manifest and focus with intention, purpose, and drive, even if it's just a fantasy in your mind, tangible it can be, and the universe will conspire with thee to successfully bring to you that which you desire may not be exactly in the same wrapping of attire that you would prefer, but hey, if all the stupidity can be like, cause I have no, I have no, well, we have conditioning and we have stupidity and we have human stupidity just continuing to grow um, in our evolution and stuff like this, right? Because based off of episode one, two, and three, and if you haven't seen that, please, like, come on, like, why are you watching episode three? But either way, um, <laughs> for the human stupidity contributing to the success of his murderous rage 
of, and it's not even done in rage, it's just sadistic in every kind of way, where he was like devoid of emotion in some kind of way. Like if that button, that switch, you can't say he was devoid of emotion because in these acts he felt. So that's an emotion, like even though, you know, what he felt and all this kind of stuff, like whatever the case may be. But hold on, <laughs> my animals, my animals. Because you see in episode three, like his active imagination, because this is what I was saying in episodes one and two, is the buildup of something like this. It's not like he just woke up like this in one day, acted upon this. This is the gradual buildup his whole entire life that never got checked. Right. You know, and we can understand as a parent, like as a parent, um, we're, we, we want to be supportive of our children and we want to be, you know, positive life enforcers in their lives, like in terms of being the light shining bright, the breed of seed of exampling that you desire to see in this world, be that gift for your child. Right. Um, so that that way they can be the breed and seed and continue that even though it's like walking a tightrope, you know, because you're the implementer of the new that is new to you too, right? Anyway, but like, there were clear signs, like, you know, like, again, don't go basing every fact that you think off of this Netflix series. It's mixed with fiction, okay? As you can see, if you're watching this with me, especially like we're just bringing out and extracting some things and stuff like that. But still, the development of what I'm getting from the Netflix series, if it's teaching me anything, and then just think about what else is teaching others <laughs> who may not be of good thought. <laughs> right? But again, they showed the perversion a little bit in his alcohol, like um, when he would drink by himself and um, be dancing and talking and like flirting with nobody right his imagination so that's what it made me think of right now and I was like oh I left my 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 notepad over there and all these other little extra things and I'm like Cynthia my assistant <laughs> bring me my notes <laughs> but you know let me use because Jeffrey Dahmer before he had his um victims right um he was fantasizing about dancing and stop. No, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. Acting all shy and grinding and grinding and grinding, right? And and then because the imagination is especially when it's activated, and then this is a loner loner. I talk about I'm a loner. I really feel like Jeffrey Dahmer was like a loner loner and only like um awkwardly socialized in these moments that didn't build any friendships and stuff like that I I, I like I I understand the loner kind of life like even when I have a circle of friends that all were within the circle of friends I always felt like you know like the outsider and I'm always like the one that they would be like if I don't call you you don't call me my family tells me the same thing all the time and I'm like if I, you don't call, if I don't call you, you don't call me, like, you know, and all this kind of, I feel like I did all my chatty chatty on the phone in elementary school, <laughs> so I'm not one, like, I'm, I'm a texter and stuff like that, because, um, anyways, it's not about me, it's not about me, it's not about me, if you want to learn more about me and all this other kind of stuff, and all this, oh my gosh, thank you so much for, um, more subscribers, and to the returning ones too um thank you for helping me grow my channel i'm planning to go live once i reach a thousand subs and it's growing guys so thank you and you know maybe this too brings a new demographic because i'm gonna be doing more stuff like this i'm gonna be and if there's anything that you want me to see and then review upon and talk about and stuff like that let me know and if it's of interest to me I, like i can't promise you that i'm gonna do those kind of things because truly like my, even my daughter knows if i don't if you don't if, if something doesn't have me within the first like five minutes of something, I'm off and doing something else, especially. So like how she's been able to um, get me to even sit is because I make a lot of things, you understand? So I'm utilizing my time anyway. So now like, so she's, that's how she 
got it. She's like, mom, since you're sitting right there, because I'm, I'm making stuff like, like, like these earrings, I make jewelry, I make a whole bunch of stuff. I do things like, you know what I mean? She's like, since you're sitting right there, I'm going to just put the TV on and watch this with me. And that's how she got me to start enjoying shows with her again, which reintroduced me into television. You understand? So 10 plus years or so, I, I, like, I, I don't have time for that. And I'm not saying I'm not dissing anybody that um, watches TV and gets lost in shows. But if you're just only watching TV and just getting lost in shows and that's your life and that's your lifestyle and that's what you want and that's how you're just going to continue to go, then fine, but no judgment pass. But if you want to get shit done and you want, you have, there's other things to life than sitting and watching TV. And I don't come from, too, like the generation of, like, I didn't, even growing up, like when cable and NC, like all those things started coming out, I never had that. The first time I ever got like cable was when I moved out on my own and already like MTV and all these other shows have been out. And I always felt like I didn't have that experience growing up when I first started because my family didn't get that. So like my, my childhood best friend, like she's the one that had cable. So I like when I would go across the street to her house and stuff like that, not that we said we were outdoors kids. So like, you know, the eighties generation and stuff like that, us, we played outside. We did a lot of outdoor activity kind of things. And I, the last thing I wanted to do as, cause I felt like a prisoner too, when I was a child, because they didn't let me do shit. That's how I felt. Um, Anytime I got out of my house, I did not want to stay cooped up in somebody else's house. So I'm not watching TV. You understand? So it's like, even though I had shows and there were things that, again, like I have my, my, my life, 40 plus years of life, right? Of where I did have TV shows, I did watch stuff. But anyways, it's not my everything. I think I I don't, I personally don't have a TV. (laughs) Nor will, I don't think I'm getting one. (laughs) If anything, I do want the projector. I was telling my daughter that I was like, you can have like a, the projector thing. I think that's really cool out of the way. Like you only use it when you want to come down and like, you know, like watch something, if anything, like, you know what I mean? Or a movie room and stuff like that. But anyways, Jeffrey Domner will teach you that his imagination helped him and the universe conspire together to align stupid people to in his path to further enable him to continue with his murderous um um sadistic twisted killings because that's like the only thing I could come up with in terms of like because in episode three remember we were talking about episode two in episode motherfucking three right we see that he could have been stopped from jump street anybody watch 21 jump street I used to watch 21 jump street when I was little joined up <laughs> childhood courage like mm, cry baby I watched the, the, the movie cry baby a thousand and one times I knew every single line, every single song, and I played every single part. It's like the Madonna Immaculate Collection, too. The video, the VHS. Do you guys even know what VHS is? Whatever. I used to rewind it, watch it all the way from start to back, and be on the bed singing material, girl. Like, you know, whatever. Doing my own, like, because dramatic and theatric be me. Like, a lot of my childhood history, too, is... Sorry, but I'm in work mode. I cannot. (laughs) I'm excited to do this. And I'm like really like racing in my mind because I'm cutting it close for time because I do have an appointment and stuff like that. And um, I have to use this too because it's a recorded session. Like, so yeah, like, you know, too. I like people book me online, which is utopian.com. You can go check that out over there. That's just a little side note. And hello, like, why wouldn't I... (laughs) like speak about myself and all the stuff that I do and all the ways that you and I can further connect too, especially if you're here and stuff like that. So if you just want to learn more about that, because this is about Jeffrey Domner and his story right now, um, then just go to witchyutopian.com. Yay! It is a mother and daughter online metaphysical shop with exemplary services and extraordinary artistic eclectic kind of handcrafted designs and all this kind of stuff that comes in um at different times I make things based off of my schmoods and moods so everything is one of a kind and might not always be there it's not like I um create um stuff to keep stock of it's like this is made one of a kind the only of its kind do you want it that kind of stuff in the shop and things like that aside from the oils and things that I make and things like that so like yeah, so I had, sorry, I had to do my own advert. Like, if not, 
me, then who? And if not now, then when? You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, like, and Jeffrey Donner, if anything, is teaching me about the consistency of focus drive. You know what I mean? So ambitious be we, because he was sure as hell ambitious about all that he thought he was seeing and um, wanted, you know what I mean? Because even in watching some of the takes and the interviews and stuff like that, like you gotta remember, like the interviewers that are interviewing him and stuff like that, we're looking at him like, again, the, the show is titled Monster. But the more that the story just keeps opening up and the more that I keep finding out more information, I'm like, who is really the monster? I mean, you're calling him the monster, at least he's acknowledging the monster in him. You got a world of sea of people in denial, like <laughs> like that officer, right? From episode two, the, the article that I was reading to you guys, right? Talking about, I was in agony. Agony, I say. I did not do that. I did not give back a 14-year-old child boy to a sadistic serial killer. I did not do that. That's not what happened. Yes, it is. And then we can go into, oh my God, it's because he's a homophobic. And oh my God, it's because he's white and Jeffrey Dahmer was white and the guy was, the kid was ethnic and all this kind of stuff. And the neighbors were black and all this kind of stuff. And black is just like not even a freaking color. But anyways, this is how people talk or Negro, African-American. Oh no, don't insult me. You can't say that. You're not dark enough to say that word. Don't say, <laughs> you keep going and getting distracted as distracted as they can keep you is at war with no solution. I'm not with that. I'm not with that. I grew up in a very toxic household and they made me feel as though I was a traitor to them because I spoke against what I was witnessing as a child that just did not seem normal. This, this was me as a child. This is not normal. This is not okay. So then I went back to school and because I had behavioral, perceived behavioral concerns that caused me to be with a hand group of other troublesome children from elementary schools and stuff like that to get pulled out and be specially treated <laughs> and actually like therapy type of sessions and all this kind of stuff and group activities to work through because I had anger issues, short temper, short fuse, Napoleon complex, call it whatever you want. A lot of shit going on at home and impact be my wave, sensitive be my way. And <sighs> where you think you're going to channel all that energy. So think about the confusion children have with the sub what they're subjected to, what they're projected upon, and what they're told and sold and all this kind of stuff. And anyways, right? All these behavioral patterns and conditionings that occur. And for a while, I accepted. For a long while, I accepted that I am the problem. Right? I get emotion emotional and passionate, but I speak from a very healed perspective in regards to this. I just have a strong Pisces moon. I ask, like, why do I have to cry about everything? <laughs> so it's like, I'm always giggling and tearing. So don't get so swept away by that. I'm just very passionate about what I have to say. And it's in the, in, it invokes because this still does exist. My ability to be able to still tap into that emotion may not necessarily just be my commotion, but this is a world life, world life, world, worldwide, <laughs> worldwide, collective grievance in all its different pockets of variety that everybody wants to not fully feel. Right, which is we go to the numbing behavioral patterns and conditionings for real, the suppression for real, the oppression for real. It just comes in different, so many different ways. And everybody wants to be accepted, loved, understood in every kind of way. So they comply, they conform because there is no other way. You come out of the womb and spoon fed all that which they say. And you're to take that in 
and apply that, whatever you receive, and make it fit with you. You know what I mean? And if it doesn't fit with you, then you're the fucking problem. Granted, there are people like Dahmer that takes that, like we said in episode two with the frogs. Like he could have been heartbroken and like me, I would have probably cried, been insensitive and got butt hurt in my feelings. I'm like, that's the last time I'm going to give that teacher anything. But no, he went, he went, followed that kid home, snuck into his house, took back the frogs, went to the stream, river, wherever it is that he got all those frogs from with that water, poured some motor oil or either way. He poured something in the jar with the intention, purpose, and focus of killing these frogs and making them suffer, die, for the sins that that teacher, we could call it sins, I'm being dramatic and stuff like that, but, um, but seriously, the insensitivity, the cruelty, the lack of kindness, the lack of forethought, the lack of compassion towards these children that we're, at, we're asked to raise. When you send your child to school and, and, and you got, you're in school with these, these teachers supposedly who freaking, they're in this um, career path because this is where their humanitarian spirit leads them to want to become a teacher. And that's not talking about, I'm talking about pedophiles and people that fucking want to be just around children and to hurt them. I'm not talking about those anomalies of like, you know, whatever, for the most part, all the population of schools that exist with teachers in it, that teach p- t- people that went to school, got their education and set themselves on path is because they wanted to be something positive and, and, and good for our children to whatever. So you got this, which of a book, who when granted we all make mistakes we all like some like wow like i'm sure i hope that later on when she thought about it like fudge why did i do that like oh my god and and maybe like i hope she would have quickly realized and apologized to the kid like hey i know that um you gave that to me and like you know at least make some kind of like ho- like like write out of it or whatever and granted sometimes we we learn too late and you may not have that opportunity to make, to say that apology or to make what you wrong right and stuff like that, but you can energetically do so, right? It, 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 it's a solution and stuff like that, right? But that's not about this and that's not about that and that's another kind of video, you know what I'm saying? But like, there's just so many different alternate ways to handle things if we just really think about our purpose, our function, our plan, and what, what energy, 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 because that's your energy. If you ever want to know the energy of the room, check your fucking energy too. Like granted, I'm not talking about like when you're assessing a room and reading other people's energy and all this, I'm just saying, as within exudes on out. So that's what monsters are all about, right? And Jeffrey Dahmer, as within, we're shown in episodes one, two, and three that clearly something, something was not, <laughs> and I don't want to use the word normal because this normal in this world is sucks. It really sucks. It's sad. This normalcy in this world is freaking sad that you have people that are monkey brained. Monkey brained. Monkey brained. What do you mean by monkey brain? I mean monkey see, monkey do. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Think about how long, ever since I've been alive in this earthly perceived reality in this life, hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil, that saying has been around, shown with the monkey depiction for quite some time. I don't know when it was its origin. I'm going to write that down so I can look that up and maybe we'll talk about that later. Okay, two, but either way, Oh shit, time. All right. Um monkey see do monkey see see no monkey see monkey do monkey see monkey do 
has there ever been a lifetime of you in this lifetime that did not know that phrase monkey see monkey do or hear no evil see no evil speak no evil let me know if you know when it's starting or have you been around all your life and always known that saying whether you have applied it or thought about it or whatever but you know of it like in some kind of way so think about that that's a collective consciousness conditioning way of thinking like when i was talking about in episode one and two and i was talking about how people sit around like the same thing with the neighbors right there was a 45 apartment unit building with multiple apartments on each floor so although Nisi Nash is the neighbor that is highlighted next door to Jeffrey Dahmer, there were other neighbors around Jeffrey Dahmer. I said I was going to check that out, and I didn't. So mind, all right, monkey see, monkey do, origin two, and then Dahmer's apartment building. I'm gonna I'm gonna look up pictures and stuff like that, and really get like I don't want to like don't fully quote me on that, but I'm pretty freaking sure based off of just not even the the Netflix series, but based off of images and pictures I saw of the actual real place. It was an apartment complex reminding me of like certain projects or um, affordable housing kind of setups and stuff like that, right? In New York City, right? Um, so yeah, so, so monkey see, monkey do, this monkey brain kind of system too, of speak no evil, hear no evil, see no evil kind of thing, ignoring the fucking problem until one person or until finally there's a breaking of something, like a chain, breaking of chains, like my first video, right? Breaking of chains, like we're breaking the chains, right? I didn't want to record. I was going against how I felt and all this kind of stuff and pushing myself past my own fear, my own block and breaking these chains, right? So until someone breaks these chains and it's always that one bold, courageous, ah, leader, right? That is like, ah, finally, right? Setting free, it's just like with the arrest of Jeffrey Donner in episode one, all of a sudden, all of a fucking sudden, you, you see how many neighbors he got and every, almost every single one of them had something to say. Oh, that was the stench. Oh, I'm smelling this for so many years. And I know his new sign was wrong in there. Really? You did nothing about it. Now you have the newer saying. Now I can say, like, you see how I'm saying about monkey see, monkey do, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, how I don't know an existence without having knowing that saying in some kind of way, how long has that been conditioned into our wave? I'm 40 plus years old. So that's already four, four, four decades, right, of life that I know, I, I don't know life without it, right? That I don't know. So think about the cementing of that. Now you see, and I can now see the development. I'm going to look into this too as to exactly when, because this wasn't always, when you say, if you see something, say something, right? When I used to ride the New York City trains, that, that line started to come out. Like if you see something, because now they're trying to change up the momentum. If you see something, say something, right? And still that conditioning became a little bit hardened and then whatever. And then now, now you have, like, it's just so convoluted, all this kind of stuff and all the shaming and all the guilting and all, all the um, humiliation people endure or like talked about or something like if you say something oh you're such a tattletale oh uh, snitches get stitches and all this kind of fear and all this kind of stuff or whatever and things like that or just like even me when I was a child and I went and I mentioned something that was going on in my house because I'm I'm being told it's okay it's safe for me to say what I need to say because they're trying to get to the bottom of why I'm misbehaving or why I'm so short fused and all this kind of stuff so I say what I say and then because I say what I say and, and they receive what they receive. And, you know, for me, this is normalcy. To them, they hear what a child says and mind you, they try to appear as cool, calm and collected. They go back when you leave and everything's gonna be okay. You know what I mean? And then they call your family, not telling you that that's what they're gonna do. So you come home and you walk into, fine, mind you, you're in elementary school. You come home and you, you, you walk into war, war, Z. You, how dare you speak about what happens here in this family house? How the trader no on slot on fucking slot. 
So I understand why people don't want to get involved sometimes. Because damned if you do and damned if you don't. Like with Niecy Nash. But she was relentless. That's how it's depicted. She, she kept on, even though every single time she was shot down. She was the only righteous one of that, like that Jesus righteous anger, right? Display when he flips over the tables and every kind of way. And I'm not getting religious in any kind of way. It's just a parable of a story to display something greater that must be conceived here, right? That righteous anger. She's like, I told you this could have all been avoided. Bring me back to episode three, right? Nisi Nash was like, this could have all been avoided. Five other people didn't have to be killed. That little boy did not have to be killed. Had you freaking listened to me? You killed him. You're a monster. And now when we learn from the Wikipedia thing too, one, I was like, I, this kid is bleeding. He's look like he's like slipping in and out of freaking unconsciousness. Granted, he may look like, um, that's another like discriminating kind of act. You can say that you're looking at him like, He's Asian, Loatian, whatever, in some kind of way. Oh, do you not speak English? Oh, blah, 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 blah. No, he's not speaking at all. Red flag? Red flag. Now, do you not speak English? He's not speaking at all. And then we learn from the Wikipedia kind of thing, too, because not from the New York Post. Not from the, in, right? So it's like not misinformation. It's like I'm giving you some of the information. Because they said, from the call, right? Because remember this, they called. So granted, those officers did not pick up that phone call when Niecy Nash and the niece and the daughter were calling and whoever was calling the police, like, yo, there's this boy that came running out of his freaking apartment naked, bloody, from the butt, from the head, from all this kind of stuff, like, like a zombie, look like a child to me. And then if you read from more of the articles and stuff like that, Nisi Nash recognized him from the neighborhood and was saying, no, that's a boy. And Jeffrey Dahmer, no, that's my 19-year-old boyfriend. And he's drunk. And yeah, we got into a little lover's quarrel. The boy is bleeding. Is that a lover's quarrel? The boy is bleeding, uh, running from your place. Can someone let a doctor say he's okay? That's logic for me. Like, I don't understand how that got skipped. When you pull up to a scene of an accident, someone refuses uh, medical care and all this kind of stuff, they write that shit in the reports. No, this person refused or left the scene of the accident and, and, and does not want to leave in this ambulance because you're saving your ass. You're doing your job. You're following protocol. You are advising them. You look hurt. Well, even if you don't look hurt, we just want to make sure you don't, you, you know, like sometimes there's like whiplash kind of effect. You don't feel it now, but you feel it later, like something something but as we read from those articles of these officers they were they're trained to distinguish and know better than the rest of us stupid people this has nothing to do with color it has everything to do with that they did not do their job those particular officers and then the fact that the FDNY, well, it's not FDNY because they were in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, sorry. I'm just saying that we learned too that a fire, a fire station's ambulance also came too. And perceived and believed that that boy should be seen and taken in to be checked out. But the officers trained in battlefield, protect and serve, no medical. Granted, I don't know too, because I, I know as a like massage therapy and stuff like that, like I had to get like um, certified, like um, the certification for like, you know, CPR and those kind of things I had to take in order for this and a lot of 
you know, different kind of fields and stuff. So I don't know the leveling of that, but still that's not a medical degree. That's going way beyond your pay scale and your job. Mind the job, mind the business that pays you. So you have people that are riding an ambulance where this is their field of expertise saying, hey, he looks like he needs to be checked out. So why would those stupid people go against their training? So we're like these questions should have been addressed. I think they saying all these these officers too. Um, God, I'm gonna. What happened to the ambulance? Did they ever get checked for their stupidity? Ambulance people asked to leave. Right, because the officers with no medical training, what's so fudging ever, no P, no nothing. You don't, you don't know shit from shit about that. Even if you do, that's not your job. So how dare you take your position of perceived power and authority and go along now. No, no, that's not what this is. This is a domestic homosexual, domestic, uh, a domestic dispute between two homosexuals. And granted, maybe those are the words that they were using. And maybe that's the anger that the other people that were observing were saying that they were homophobic and all this kind of stuff because they used those that language, their direct language. No, 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 this is a domestic dispute between homosexuals. Oh, homophobia or racism. Oh, you know, like, like I said with the episode two, like um, with uh, uh, something that I had heard Candace Owens, right? Say about something that somebody attacked her for um, when she was making a point that made sense about something else that this person attacked her for her verbiage, for her choice of words when she mentions, oh, I think it was about the Kim Kardashian and the calling her like a prostitute or they're not arguing about that, but like, um, having that the mother watching like the videos of her daughter having intercourse with somebody else and all this kind of stuff, how, <laughs> How, how the mother could even first do that. That was the whole point. Like, 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 do you not see this? Like she was making her whole point, but because she used the line sex out of wedlock, that's what the person was all sanctimonious about calling her sanctimonious with her Christianity and her way and her view. How dare you say um, sex without uh, without wedlock, because that's what it is. But do you see how saying that might sound condescending to somebody who's triggered by that because maybe they're having sex out of wedlock? But regardless of what you think, like sh it's not an insult. It's just a, 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 a f her alignment of speech, which she can back, granted, with her lifestyle, that's her preference, that's her choice, that's the way that she sees it. And so what? She's not saying that, oh, they're going to hell because they're having sex out of wedlock, bringing her views or her position, if that's how she sees it. I'm not saying that either. I don't know how she sees it. I don't know any of that. All she said was sex out of wedlock. And the person was triggered by that. So maybe these officers, because it says, right, that they wrote it off as a domestic dispute between homosexuals so they could have been speaking matter of factly like that which triggered the fudge out of these people who already have their own issues and concerns with you know the race like because this is also during those years where it was still like you know white against black and this and that and that like everybody's a crayon now you know what i'm saying and so but what i want to understand it's just like with the teacher in the school. You supposedly are doing this, right? Position, this job, this career field that you went into, right? Or this path you found yourself on, whether it's temporary or um, um, permanent. It's part of your path. It's part of your evolution. It's part of all of that. 
So why did the ambulance not do their job? From their training, their expertise, and refute the officers. And then you know what? Let's dispatch this in and let's get a third party for solution because I don't agree with what this officer is telling me to leave the scene because this boy looks hurt. And as, as I have been trained and I am doing for how many years I've been doing this, this looks like something I cannot walk away from professionally as I'm here. So I'm calling in something else. We're having an issue here where officers are telling me that to leave the scene that we've been called for, we've all been called for in different departments, right? Because that's the fire department is the police coming to check out the scene, see what's happening. Because the only reason why the ambulance came is because the report was there was a boy running naked, bleeding out his ass, out his head, looking a little bit like a zombie and all this kind of stuff. Look, I'm really, really hurt. Look like a child to me. He needs some medical attention. So why didn't that happen? Now let's go to episode three, his first kill. So, so all this, so this is what brings me back to the land of imagination and fantasy buildup and all this kind of stuff that <laughs> Domner in his alignment of alchemy, because he wasn't confused about what he wanted to do. He was meticulous. Um, my 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 friend, we were talking about it. It was like, oh, that maybe the whole thing with the um, the reason why he was doing all this stuff or what started the the pathway to um disintegrating the body and those fluids and 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 chopping them up and dismembering and all this kind of stuff because he hadn't he had he um, didn't know what to do with the bodies, right? He didn't know what to do with the bodies. And um, maybe that's what started that thought. He was already killing people. Like, so it just opened up a new sick thought of how to rid that. But I find that, like, I think I said this earlier, like, I know that this is day two and I probably did say that, like, um, I did probably mention this because now I'm kind of remembering something. Um, granted, that could be, true in some kind of degree, some kind of way, because we learned this in the first kill. So episode three, the hitchhiker, Steve, right? Steven, um, the blackout too, you gotta understand. So this is too when you learn about certain kind of blackouts with him too, where he doesn't um, recall the things that he does like with certain kind of things. So with the scene with Steven, um, he lures Steven back to his place because he's driving home, whatever, on his way back from wherever he was coming from. And he runs by, um, he drives by this new guy that's running or like trying to hitchhike or something like that. Now, mind you, up until this point, before this guy, Steven, comes into play, there's um, constant scenes of... Jeffrey admiring and watching this other nearby neighbor jogging, right? That this is who we thought, I thought that was going to be Steven, right? Leading up to this point, because he, he, because we know that this is episode three is going to show his first kill and this guy named Steven. So this whole time that he's watching this dude jogging with his short shorts and every day like you know they was the times that they would see each other sometimes you know they would acknowledge each other while he's in the car driving by he's jogging by you know a little like you know like because you see them around and stuff like that so then one day this is before steven um i guess he was thinking about it in his brain like he wants to um do something to this guy because the fantasy has been building up because up until that point he would go home and drink and then like um dance on the chair pretending somebody was like sitting there and I, and we can imagine that this was the dude he was fantasizing about and finding himself attracted to that he's been watching nearby. So then one day, spoiler alert, remember what I said, I don't care, right? So there we go. So um, so then um, he's watching him, watching him, right? And um, one day he, because it's clocking, like, so this kid obviously jogged at the same time all the time. So Jeffrey got to where they usually see each other or, or space that he can hide with a bat, right? With a bat. And um, 
and hid behind like bushes and was waiting for this kid to run by. So look it, already in his mind is sadistic twisted in some kind of way. Like, so we can say he never planned like to... Okay, I'm gonna see. I, I have. I'm gonna have to pause this again. Okay, because the time is going, and we're gonna talk about this more. So give me some time. Cliffhanger. <laughs> so apparently, and I really have to wrap this up now. Um, I can't record more than one at a time, so I have to end this one right now. <laughs> so episode three, I'm going to continue with episode four. Or this episode three is going to have a part two, <laughs> which I said I wasn't going to do, but we're flowing, we're growing. And that's like a cliffhanger for you. So you're going to have to wait now for me to continue talking about this where we're leaving off. And I love you so much. I swear I do. I did not mean to do this, but life, you know, give me and all this kind of stuff. And I love what I do. And I really want to continue this chat with you guys. So let me know where you're at with all of this. Anyways, make sure to tap in, turn on, tune in, hit that notification bell. Also follow the playlist too, because the playlist is going to allow you to see to, to just have direct navigation to just these videos if that's all you're interested in stuff like that more videos like this will come let me know what other kind of videos you want me to do um and stuff like that and comment on too or readings too because i love to read i'm a book core right so um yeah so all everything in the description box i use as a personal like freestyle writing spree channeling thing so if there's nothing there um aside from just the generic message of like the links and stuff that I share and all that kind of stuff um then come back because um like I said I do things in between things I don't edit or anything like that I upload and then I run I'm on the run so um whenever I get to the description box and all this kind of stuff sometimes it's later after the upload so I'm just letting you know that now too so if there is nothing in the description box like a freestyle writing of mine I haven't done it yet but you can see what I mean when you go back to all the other kind of videos when I'm talking about freestyle you know writing and that kind of stuff and just let you know what the video is about or whatever flows through my mind and stuff like that so that's what that's about I'm a writer like a writer before speaker you know what I'm saying so um yeah and so that's just the artistry within me and there's a master link that i share that um has every single link that connects you and i and every single kind of platform and stuff like that and anything that you would be interested in knowing more of you can find in that master link you can also find me on instagram at enchantress e-n-c-h-a-n-t-r-e-s-s -S. that's me the one and only okay and um yeah till next time thank you so much all right so we're going to continue Episode three is going to be a part two. <laughs> so this is part one of episode three. Um, you know what I mean? Thank you so much for your patience with me, even though this is slow stream for you guys. But I got to go. All right. Uh, busy, busy alchemy. You can book time with me at witchyutopian.com. Yeah, if you want a, a little extra one-on-one -on -one time, right? For different reasons, um, different seasons. You can go check that out over there. Okay? End. End. <laughs>